Nature is a tempest. You can never know when a natural catastrophe will strike, be it a tornado, hurricane, or earthquake. The latter being a destructive force that can ruin entire cities, families, and lives. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three earthquake discoveries. What would happen if a mega earthquake hit California? In 2019, an awful and powerful earthquake fell upon the Ridgecrest region of California. The disaster reached a magnitude of 6.4, only to be followed by a magnitude of 7.1 the very next day, causing significant damage to buildings and the Ridgecrest population. According to researchers, there might very well be a true catastrophe sometime in the future, a massive, unthinkable earthquake that will destroy entire Californian cities. It's uncertain at what point in time such an event would occur, but scientists believe it will likely happen in the San Andreas region. Earthquakes occur within the San Andreas Fault consistently, once every 150 years or so. No such earthquake has occurred for the past 160 years, the last recorded instance being in 1857. A scientific report from 2008 estimated that an earthquake such as this would spread 200 miles among the southernmost part of the fault and reach a magnitude of 7.8 the sheer energy of such a colossal earthquake could create enough energy for a year's worth of power for the entirety of California, to show the power and strength of these earthquakes. In the scenario that you are caught in an earthquake of this magnitude, it's advised to duck, cover, and for absolutely no reason should you run outside. The earth would tremble so intensely people would not be able to stand, and those caught outside will likely fall and break their legs. Californian buildings created before the 1980s are especially susceptible to collapse in such a scenario due to their old steel being unable to withstand the sheer pressure of an earthquake of that capacity. Downtown LA, Long Beach, and Century City would all be some of the most affected areas. Despite some earthquakes causing tsunamis, experts believe that a mega-earthquake hitting California would not trigger one in that instance. Fortunately, because the damage and loss of life caused by the earthquake itself would be dire enough. The San Andreas region is too far inland to cause significant shifts in the ocean floor, which are responsible for after-earthquake tsunamis. Scientists estimate that the megaquake would leave more than 50,000 people injured and cause at least 1,800 to lose their lives. After the initial earthquake debris from collapsed buildings would fall on passers-by and fires would run rampant across the affected areas. California's economy would be in shambles, as would its architecture. The San Andreas Fault possesses 39 gas pipelines which could potentially be damaged and cause severe explosions all over the region. Alongside the gas pipelines, the earthquake would likely destroy the water pumps, meaning that the affected areas would have no access to fresh water for days or likely weeks. Experts predict up to 60% of the San Andreas Fault water supply would be lost. Overall, an earthquake of this size would cost the economy around $200 billion, and since there is no way to successfully predict when the mega-earthquake may occur, Experts call for Californians to formulate emergency plans. More 9.0 megaquakes are coming. The San Andreas megaquake is not the only megaquake that may befall the US, however. It's believed that the Pacific Ocean's Ring of Fire and the western coast of America is susceptible to a potential 9.0 magnitude earthquake. Scientists used computer simulations to measure future seismic activity based on the Earth's history of earthquakes and tectonic plate movements. Their research suggests that once every 10,000 years, the Pacific region creates megaquakes that reach a magnitude of 9 or more. In 2004, Sumatra suffered a 9.3 magnitude earthquake preceded by a tsunami that took the lives of over 200,000 people in the Pacific Rim. The infamous earthquake and tsunami of Japan in 2011 measured a magnitude of 9.0 and was responsible for 15,000 lives being taken. Yufang Rong, 
the research leader of the project working as a seismologist for the FM Global Center for Property Risk Solutions, stated that the simulated scenarios revealed 8.5 magnitude earthquakes occur in the Pacific every 250 years. Rong assures the public that just because a subduction zone hasn't produced a magnitude 8.8 in 499 years, that doesn't mean that one will happen next year. We are talking about probabilities. This time, the Californian San Andreas Fault would be relatively safe from the earthquake that would follow. The Cascadia subduction zone in the state of Washington, however, would suffer greatly. It's known that the region suffered from a magnitude 9 earthquake in 1700. If the same disaster befell Cascadia today, it would cost $80 billion in damages and could take lives of anywhere between 5,000 to 10,000 people and would affect Washington, Oregon and other surrounding states. Cascadia, according to Rong's research, suffers these earthquakes every 1,000 years, with megaquakes reaching magnitudes of 9.3 every 10,000 years. Securing architecture can be extremely difficult when it comes to earthquakes of such power. It's practically impossible to avoid the damage that will happen as a result of such intense earthquakes. Investigating a Tsunamogenic Megathrust Earthquake in the Japan Trench It's been a decade since the Tohoku Oki magnitude 9 earthquake in Japan. The massive earthquake caused catastrophic initial damage that was promptly followed by a huge tsunami that toppled anything that managed to remain after the first disaster. The Tohoku Oki earthquake's aftermath is being dealt with to this day, and the area is still not entirely rebuilt. The massive earthquake was unexpected and thrust into the fault of the tectonic plate. This has, it's believed, partially deformed the actual seismic structure. Now, scientists fear that the Japanese trench is at risk of another life-destroying earthquake. The 2011 earthquake began in the Japan Trench in the area where the Continental Plate and Pacific Plate meet. The area of Tohoku suffered greatly from the earthquake and the tsunami, as did surrounding towns and villages. The repercussions can still be felt in the modern day. The tsunami that wiped through the region measured 10 meters above sea level and traveled a shocking 530 kilometers into the Japanese coastline. The data collected before and after the earthquake and tsunami revealed that the seismic plates were dislodged by roughly 3 meters up and 31 meters to the south. Further research proved that the plate is significantly weaker and composed primarily of clay, which under immense heat and pressure allows for the fault to disfigure. The very land and seismic activity of the Japan Trench has been irreversibly altered by the 2011 disaster, making it susceptible to future earthquakes as it significantly weakened the area. Fortunately, scientists predict that an earthquake of that magnitude will not repeat in the Japan Trench for a long time, but it does increase its likelihood for lesser magnitude earthquakes to occur. But what are your thoughts on earthquakes? Have you experienced being in an earthquake? Be sure to let us know in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.